the hero's journey begins with a single step. It's that moment when you decide to stand up for something you believe in. So this is where it all began. I went for a walk on this beautiful beach almost 20 years ago, asking the question, what was next? And I found this magic stone that led to a book, a curriculum, the Institute, 120 communities around the world have used the curriculum to inspire people to service, leadership, getting involved with their communities. I've had the privilege of working alongside of Walter Cronkite, who was the chairman of our board. So many people in so many places that want to help. It's such a gift, it's so humbling. And we've really built something that um, we've tested in a lot of more rural and underprivileged communities. And now we want to bring it to everyone. And we hope everyone feels the urgency, the urgency of now. Welcome. It's great to have everyone with us today. I'm just so honored and so thrilled, starting with my dear friend Viviana Guzman for her beautiful music. She's been with us through this journey in so many places. I'm excited for all of you to meet so many incredible young people today. You are in for a treat, trust me. I'm just here to shine a light on them. We've had an amazing year during the pandemic together. We've been building a community and getting ready to share it with you. And our young people are calling it hashtag Stone Soup Leader Family. We had an amazing experience with Gandhi's grandson about a week ago. We were all a little tired. We all needed a little boost and so Gandhi's grandson joined us. And it was so moving to listen to the young people and hear how special that was. The 100 stories in the book have taken 20 years to complete. We have a, I have a business plan with the Institute. I have a hard time saying no. It's not exactly financially uh, rewarding all the time, but when we were asked to work with the young people in Vieques, Puerto Rico after the Navy left, after 68 years of protesting, we said, okay. So we flipped the whole organization upside down and started working with young people and listening to them, listening to their dreams. And each one of them that we've worked with over the years are in the book, starting with Josue Cruz, whose birthday just passed, and Cassandra Castillo, who became mentors to our young people. Each one teach one, Dr. King taught us, and that's what they do. Because in Vieques, people spoke Spanish and I didn't. So we had to develop a train the trainer program from day one. And I lived there amongst the people for four years and I learned a lot. I have great respect for the people of Puerto Rico great compassion, great empathy. I highly recommend living in another country so we can all understand what it takes on the front line, the people who are, as you call it, the canary in the coal mine, from Vieques to Puerto Rico, to Virgin Gorda, to Hawaii, to Sri Lanka. I've had the privilege of working with so many young people and they just wanna be heard and they want us to take action. So today is a call to action. Today is Stone Soup Challenge, they've named it. Mitzi and the Philippines named that. And so you'll hear them challenging you, challenging all of us to step it up. The planet needs us all. 
and they are willing to do whatever it takes. Trust me. They have really, really shown us what leadership looks like. They just want us to listen. They want us to open doors. They want to open their Rolodex, introduce us to people who can help them. That's all it takes if we work together. Stone soup, we all pitch in. Doesn't mean we, any one of us can do it. The challenges we face right now are so huge, but we the kids are counting on us. So, you know, I'm the oldest of 10. So I know from an early age, stone soup means we have to pitch in. So that's what you're gonna see today. From Martha's Vineyard, where we have an amazing bookstore with Matthew and Nancy Arany and our young people from Plastic Free MV and our young people that were trained by Josue and Cassandra, Chris Ehring and Tanara, and so many young people that you're gonna meet from all over the world, thanks to a podcast that's being created with our brave youth leader, Tan Trevor Tanaka from Hawaii, with all of his cohorts there, Kevin Patal and Vanessa Nakate and Jamie Margolin and Ada Josie, and so many young people you're gonna to get to meet. We've been asked to have 75% of this event be pre-recorded so that we can rebroadcast it. Because today we have probably 30 countries, I think, um, and several hundred people, but we'd really like to have more people see it. So we will be rebroadcasting with the help of others. So um, I know that timing is challenging at times because we have uh, so many videos to show you and sometimes things might take a couple of seconds. I wanna give a shout out to our new, brand new tech team in London and Ireland, my family's homeland, so that's very special. And so um, without further ado, I'd like to just invite you to sit back and enjoy and, in, and experience these beautiful young people. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jasper Ralph. I'm from Martha's Vineyard USA. I'm a part of Straw Free MV and Plastic Free MV, two groups that help combat plastic waste in the environment. Straw Free MV was founded when I was in second grade and we would go around to restaurants and ask them if they could not automatically hand out plastic straws to people. Plastic Free MV was formed later. We had a bylaw written that banned the sale of plastic water and soda bottles under 34 ounces. We felt that the waste in the environment of plastic bottles was overwhelming. We got this bylaw passed in four out of six towns on the island and were the first group ever to ban both plastic water and soda bottles. You can visit us and learn more on PlasticFreeMV.com or our Instagram, PlasticFreeMV. Plastic Picker and how it all started was back in the years of 2015 when me and my grandpa were just walking and we just saw just a lot of discarded plastic everywhere and this was just unacceptable and we started picking it up and my grandpa said that anything anything that falls on the ground will somehow make its way to the ocean and it doesn't matter it might take a day a week a month even a year but it will somehow make its way to the ocean and into the plastic soup and this is bad news for everyone but what's awful just really bad about plastic is that uh, it never breaks down, it's not biodegradable so it, so it forms in these tiny 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 pieces called microplastic or smaller nanoplastic and this is very 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 dangerous because the plankton they're starting to eat it and what eats plankton? Fish! And who eats that fish? Humans! So in some regions of the world humans are actually eating plastic. I was talking to 
to the Plastic Pollution Coalition. We were talking all about straws and plastic, and they taught and they told me about the four R's: recycle, renew, reuse, and most important R: refuse single-use plastic. And remember, kids, pick up your rubbish. The hero's journey begins with a single step. It's that moment when you decide to stand up for something you believe in. My name is Autumn Pelche. Um, I'm the Chief Water Commissioner for Anishinaabek Nation. I'm 16 years old. I'm doing this work as we can't just pray anymore. We must do something and we need to do it now. Water is a basic human right. Everyone deserves access to clean drinking water, no matter what our race or color is, or how rich or poor we are. When I was eight years old, I was um, attending a water ceremony in a First Nations community. I asked my mom to go to the washroom, and all over the walls said, don't drink the water, not for consumption, boil water advisory. And we had to use hand sanitizer after using the washroom. And I was very confused as to why it was like that. So I asked my mom, what does all of this mean? Why can't we drink the water? Why can't we wash our hands? And then she explained to me what all of it meant, what a boil water, what water advisory was, and that the community that we were in has been on a boil water advisory for over 20 years. I visited a First Nations community, I think, last summer. One of the, one of the kids said to me that, they're, that they're, they, she feels bad that her grandparents, who are both over 70, have to walk every day two kilometers with buckets of water to get their water from a well that everyone in the community has to share. You wouldn't even think that you're in Canada. Like I said, they're living in third world conditions and we're in a first world country. It should not be like this. That's when you know something is wrong, is when a child speaks up. And that's when you have to do something to fix it because we shouldn't have to be speaking up. Mary Ann and I were talking yesterday about how many, many years ago, uh, maybe 20, she was taking the writing from the heart workshop in my yard and she started writing the stone soup, soup book. And so um, I'm so glad to have honored to be part of that very, very early, uh, maybe the seed that got planted and, and look how we bloomed. So I would just want to say, I want to bow to Jasper Ralph and Tainara Gangalves and Chris Ehring. What you guys have done, when I think about your age, and what I was thinking of when I was your age, I was thinking about my hair and how I could make it straight. And I was thinking about chocolate chip cookies and how I could make the perfect cookie. And would the guy call me? You guys are changing the world. And of course, it is your world to inherit. Many, many years ago, before most of you were born, I said to my husband, uh, before he was my husband, for our honeymoon, I want to go to Bermuda. And he sat down and calculated what the CO2 that the airplane was going to put out from Hartford, Connecticut to Bermuda. And we did not fly. Now, that was 1965. He knew, but most people did not know. People are waking up now. Somebody used in their video the, the phrase... Uh, 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 climate emergency. That's the phrase to use. We are in a climate emergency. So, you know, this, uh, because it's a gorgeous day today, at least on Martha's Vineyard, most people are thinking, oh, what can be bad? But we know there are climate refugees. We know what's going on. It's time to get on board. And these three kids that we are so proud of, I am bowing to them. I am just blown away by what you've done. The plastic free on the vineyard, the first ever. 
very, very beautiful work that you guys are doing. And again, I bow to you. My teacher told a story about a guy who owns a painting of a sunset. Most of the painting is blah, gray, nothing. But in the right-hand corner of this painting, there is a swath of magenta that is so alive, so vibrant, so electric, so beautiful. And he brings it to the framer, and he goes back a couple of weeks later. And the framer says, you know, I didn't have a frame big enough, so um, I had to fold over that pink thing. There should be an audible gasp. I hear it. He folded over the pink thing. The pink thing is the beauty. What we can do is not control what happens to us, but we can control the size of our frame of our story. We push out the frame. We have other perspectives. What these kids have done, as far as I'm concerned, because the, the blah, the gray, is always there. There's always sorrow. There's always difficult stuff. But there's always beauty. And these kids somehow have managed to stay in balance and they can see this exquisite beauty, and at the same time, they know there's darkness, and they are working on it, and again, another bow. My husband, who I told you in 1965 was already worried about the planet, says, molten salt reactors, thorium molten salt reactors, get on it. He has no investment other than he loves this planet, just as I do. So thank you, everyone in the world who's working on this. Thank you, Marianne. It is an honor to be part of this. And uh, thank you, Jasper. Thank you, Tainara. Thank you, Chris. The work you're doing is vital, urgent. Keep going. All of you kids, it, it's it's beautiful to see. Of course, it is your planet. Thank you. Nancy Arany. We're proud to give the Stone Soup Leadership Institute's first Young Heroes Fund Award to Vanessa Nakate. She's an inspiration to me and to all the young people who are building a more sustainable world. Vanessa had the courage to overcome great obstacles and to be a voice for the voiceless. Through a Green Schools project, she's helping schools transition to solar energy and also educating children about sustainable living. Hi, my name is Vanessa Nakate and I'm a climate activist from Uganda. I'm happy to be the recipient of the first Young Heroes Fund Award. And I'm also happy to be working with millions of young people demanding for climate justice from the government leaders. All we want is a future that is safe, a future that is clean, a future that is equitable and a future that is sustainable. Thank you very much. When I realized that climate change was one of the biggest threats, I decided to start striking every Friday to hold governments and leaders accountable for the mess that they have put us in. Many of the people in my country would say that we have much bigger problems and the climate crisis is the least of those. But I believe that we cannot achieve any other problems. If we have climate change, we cannot achieve any sustainable development goal without addressing the issue of climate change. I think when people see the work that you are doing, when people see the authenticity of your work, they are actually compelled to support you and see that you drive change in your community. Salvador Gomez Colon and I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. When I was 15 years old, I started my initiative Light and Hope for Puerto Rico, an initiative to purchase and distribute solar lamps and hand-paired washing machines across Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria devastated the island in September of 2017. Light and Hope raised over $175,000 to distribute over 5,000 lamps, 2,000 washing machines to over 3,500 households across 17 different towns of Puerto Rico. I'm honored to be one of the 100 people featured in the book, Stone Soup for a Sustainable World, Life-Changing Stories of Young Heroes. You can read more about my work at salvadorgomezcolon.com.
Hi, I'm Ed Begley Jr. in beautiful Gallup, New Mexico, on my way to Albuquerque to film tomorrow. That's why I can't be with you, but I send lots of love. I know that there'll be a great book signing, a great event. Send my best to everybody at the Stone Soup Leadership Institute, all of you involved in this wonderful event. Do what you can to protect this beautiful web of life that supports us all. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Trevor Tanaka. I am the Sustainability Coordinator for the Stone Soup Leadership Institute. Um, and when I think about our planet's future, I'm hopeful because of individuals like Kevin and myself and others who are striving to make the world a better place for students in the future. And together with the work of the Stone Soup Leadership Institute and the individuals from the book, we are able to learn from, collaborate, and grow with the other leaders who have similar goals as us. I challenge you to learn about sustainable issues in your community. Find out how education and policymakers can get involved in solving these issues. And I challenge you to go on social media with the hashtag Stone Soup Challenge. And here's Kevin Patel. Hello, everyone. When I think about our planet's future, I think about the thousands of young people already taking action, implementing solutions within their communities and making a greater impact. Together with my organization, One Up Action International, we've already made a difference by providing resources to change makers just like yourselves. I challenge you to take that first step and implement any solution that you think of. Any idea you have to make a difference is worthwhile. So take that first step and make a difference. And then so next we're going to go to Adia in India. Hi, everyone. When I think about our planet's future, I feel hopeful because of the intense drive of our generation to really want to make an impact on climate change. And together with my organization, The Right Green, we've already made a difference by educating people on the importance of native plants and creating spaces that preserve our nat native biodiversity. Our organization is based in India, but no matter where you are, you can make a difference too. I challenge you to learn more about the impact that native plants have in restoring ecosystems and to plant five native trees local to your area and share on social media with the hashtag stone soup challenge. Thank you, Adia. So next we are going to go to Shreya in Nepal. Hi everyone. When I think about our planet's future, I feel hopeful because I'm not alone fighting for a better tomorrow. In fact, we are building a generation of young people who are environmentally conscious. Together with our organization, MOCOP26, we have already made a difference by hosting an online inclusive young people-led event to fill the void of COP26 and to show the world leaders and global community what an ambitious yet realistic COP would look like. 330 young people from 140 countries participated in two-week event to prepare the mock up 26 treaty and now we are working to implement the treaty in at least 30 countries till cop 26. our project is a global youth-led campaign but no matter where you are you can make a difference i challenge you to educate your family about climate crisis and share about it in the social media and also tag stones of family thank you shreya so next we are going to nav in india Hi everyone. When I think about our planet's future, I feel hopeful because of the education and action my organization is taking against air pollution and waste. Together with my organization, One Step Greener, we have already made a difference by responsibly recycling the way our waste, educating people, and providing waste pickups to over 1,400 households, and doing dense tree plantations in urban places. Till now, we have recycled over 160. 1,000 kgs of waste, saved 2.1 million liters of water, and sequestered around 119,000 pounds of carbon in just over four years. Our organization is based in India, but no matter where you are, you can make a difference too. 
I challenge you to try to not use plastic in your daily in your daily needs and make sure your re recyclables are responsibly recycled. And remember to share this on your social media with a hashtag with a hashtag hashtag Stone Soup Challenge. Thank you, Nav, and thank you for your enthusiasm. And next, we have the same in Kenya. Hello, everyone. Uh, so when I think about our planet's future, I feel hope because I see young people around the world getting more involved in creating solutions and taking action to conserve our environment. Like me, using my passion for football to conserve the environment and coming up with trees for goals. Together with my, with my organization, Trees for Goals, we have already made a difference by planting over 2,000 trees. My organization is based in Kenya, but remember, no matter where you are, you can make a difference too. I challenge each and every one of you to plant 11 trees before the end of the year and share on social media with the hashtag, hashtag stone soup challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Lissane. And next we're going to Jamie and she's currently based in Seattle. Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Margolin. Um, my advice to young change makers out there is to join a community, be a part of a collective of people fighting for justice, fighting for change. Um, we are not going to create climate action or any action on our own. We're not going to be able to solve this issue simply by individual action. I think a huge myth is the idea that, oh, if I just recycle or if I just do these small individual things, which are meaningful, um, but if we only do that, then we'll be okay and we're gonna solve this crisis. When in reality, um, we need collective change. And so I um, challenge everyone to join an organization, join a community, movement, subscribe to different email lists, just whether it be Zero Hour, which is my climate justice organization, or the Sunrise Movement, or One Up Action as Kevin's organization, or any other um, movement or organization, I really encourage and challenge everyone um, to join a collective because that is truly the best way to take action um, because we're not gonna be able to solve this alone. We're up against the fossil fuel industry, which is quite literally a well-oiled machine, a lot of funding, they're very coordinated, they know what they're doing. And so we have to be just as, we have to be even more organized, more strategic than them. And so that is what I encourage everyone to do. Um, thank you so much to everyone who is a part of this event and for, um, and I'm really honored to be a part of the book. My name is Trevor Tanaka, and I'm the Stone Soup Leadership Institute Sustainability Coordinator and Co-Summit Director. By engaging young people and sustainable leaders from around the world, we are able to make a difference in the global fight against climate change and environmental pollution. However, it doesn't take an organization to make a difference in the world. I challenge you to find out about environmental issues in your community. Find out how they are unique to your community and what you can do to engage the people around you to help you solve these issues. Together with our organisation, PetitionGirls.com, we have already made a difference by encouraging people to petition about things that they believe in and petitioning about things that we believe in as well. 
Our organisation is based in London, England, but no matter where you are, you can make a difference too. I challenge you to start make, raising awareness about an issue that you care about in your neighbourhood that maybe not many people know about. Maybe start your own petition or campaign or do something that others aren't. And don't forget to share on social media with the hashtag Stone Soup Challenge. And don't forget to tag your friends. Hello world, my name is Iqbal and I am from Islamabad, Pakistan. With my project Climate Awareness for Everyone, I am working on spreading climate education across my country. I am excited to be one of the 100 people in the book Stone Soup for a Sustainable World, Life-Changing Stories of Young Heroes. Together with other young activists, we make a change in the world by working together to spread climate education in areas that are most vulnerable to climate change. To know more about our work, please visit fridaysoffuture.pk. Thank you. Today, we're literally experiencing a plastic apocalypse here in the mangroves of Southeast Bali. Literally 22 hectares covered in plastics like this. You know, it's soon I watched one mission to clean rivers and we're doing this every single day. We've placed 75 barriers to stop plastic pollution from going into the ocean. We've been retracing this one river. Uh, you know, here in the mangroves, this is literally the worst site possible here on Bali. So for World Environment Day, we're launching our biggest cleanup yet to clean this up. But, you know, bare hands is not, not going to be enough. We need all support, donations, equipment, but people. This is a month-long cleanup to restore these very beautiful mangroves, to give them back to life. Uh, so, so much work is needed. Uh, please, please help us. I'm Linus, I'm the co-founder of Climate Society Switzerland and organiser with Fridays for Future Germany. Um, we've brought millions of people to take to the streets to demand climate action and governments to stay in line with the Paris Agreement all around the globe. And I believe that as a society we need to come together to combat climate change. We need people to connect, we need people to educate one another and we need people to collectively push for more climate action. Uh, and so I also ask you to, um, first of all, join our next Global Climate Strike this autumn and bring your friends. And secondly, share this post using the hashtag Stone Soup Challenge. Thank you so much. Hello world, my name is Iris Jen and I'm the co-founder of Friday's Fever Digital based internationally and the founder of Sunrise Movement Howard County based in the United States. In the fight against climate change, it is important that everyone contributes their part no matter what it may be. That's why I'm challenging you to get involved in your community, whether that be your school, your workplace, company, some organization you're part of, your congregation, your city, or just your friends and family in pushing for climate justice and action. 
see what's already there and what's lacking and push for sustainability in your communities. Share on social media with the hashtag Stone Soup Challenge. So Mariana, I just wanted to thank you for this incredible work you did. It's a privilege and an honor for me to be part of this life-changing stories of young heroes. I hope I'm the youngest one. Um, you know what we do at C2C, we transform marine plastic that we collect in different parts of the world into glasses. Um, and so I'm going to sign this book to the young heroes that are changing the world. Thank you very much, Marianne, great initiative. Hope to see you soon. Dear future generation, may your hope for a better world galvanize you to make it happen. With you in impact, Anna Sophia Blossett. So Kevin and I have our books and we are waiting for the rest of the youth leaders to join us. We will do the signing. Perfect. So with this signing and with this book, we're hoping that students and young leaders from around the world will be able to get a little inspiration from all of our stories and hopefully incite them to make change for themselves in the future. The hero's journey begins with a single step. It's that moment when you decide to stand up for something you believe in. Hello world, I am Mitzi Jo Tan from Manila, Philippines, and together with my organization Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines, I am working towards climate justice. Together with some other youth climate activists, we make a change in the world by raising awareness about the climate crisis, learning from the most impacted communities, and helping them rebuild their lives after they were hit by typhoon after typhoon, and mobilizing hundreds of Filipino youth to demand change out on the streets. And our work already has an effect. By coming together, we have managed to mobilize hundreds of Filipino youth to demand change, mobilize thousands of people across the globe to support our campaigns here in the Philippines for climate justice. And you can learn more all about all of this at yakap.org or on our Twitter at Yaka Philippines or my Twitter at Mitzi Jonah.
I have a, a tissue that's very well used. I don't know about you, but um, it's pretty inspiring to get to know all of these young people. I feel privileged to feel that they trust us enough to share their stories. So thank you all who have shared yours. And our hope is to shine the light. So anyone who's watching who feels moved to want to shine the light, every one of the stories in the book have a call to action. So when you look at the book, you'll see there's a website, there's social media, there's all kinds of information so that you can follow and support them. And our team will promise you that we will be sharing the stories every week. We feature a different hero. So people that you know, might not be able to get the book, we'll be able to at least have a story every week and a video and lots of inspiring messages and challenges. As you see, they take the stone soup challenge very seriously. So we'll shine the light on them and all the great work that they're doing. I would be remiss if I didn't let you know Shreya and several others are taking a leadership role in COP26 in Scotland in November. So pay attention to all of what they have to say. We have that message in the book so you can learn more about the importance of challenging our leaders to step it up and have the young people be at the table. Jerome Foster, who is President Biden's youngest person on the Environmental Justice Council. He was Congressman John Lewis's intern. And so he went from being on the streets organizing with Jane Fonda Fridays for Our Future in front of the White House to now he's in college. But he's working with the leaders and Iqbal in Pakistan. They're working with the leaders. So everyone has a different role, as you see. Some are out in the beaches cleaning up the trash and some people are in the seats of power and that's what it takes. And so we invite you all to support them in their journey. The Institute going forward, as of today, Trevor is helping to lead our podcast. This was our first Stone Soup Leader podcast. So we'll be bringing you more of those opportunities to bring people together. After 16 sustainability summits, week-long summits, we're taking this all to a virtual level. We also have an education curriculum. For every story in the book, we have a lesson plan. So we hope that the teachers, the educators, for a limited time, we're offering a free ebook any educator who fills out the form and tells us what school you go to, we're providing a free ebook. And every week we feature a lesson plan because our goal is to be able to provide more information to our children so they will understand how they can help build a better world, a more just, more equitable, a more sustainable world. So if you know any teachers, there's lots of them out there. They're a little tired after the last year they've had. So just let them know there's something free for them if they let us know. And then for those of you that have any kind of means, the Young Heroes Fund would provide financial support, grants, training for the young people. So anyone that's interested in knowing more about that, just let us know. Thank you. And so we highly depend on our young people to carry this, this action, this message. So to all the young people on this call and, and on, this, on this book signing and on, on, this, on this mission, on this assignment, we give you all whatever we picked up throughout the years <clears throat> that we share with you, that we, that we bless you with this work so that you will continue for seven generations to bring healing 
and to change this world. If we are going to survive, our grandchildren are going to survive. If your grandchildren are going to survive, we must all work together and face those challenges with our heads up high and staying strong. So to, for everyone um, from this beautiful land of Santa Cruz, California, and the Redwoods, we got to be like the Redwoods you know, family. <laughs>